Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So in this little segment, we're going to focus on Gosling's definition. What is he saying about Java? So he created two things. The language and a program to run the programs for that are written with the language. It's called the Java Virtual Machine. So the Java programming language is <coughs> what you guys will be learning in this course. And Java Virtual Machine is what you will be using to run the programs that you will be writing. Okay? Java Virtual Machine is basically a software that runs Java programs. When we talk about Java in general, we talk about both of these things. We talk about the programming language and the runtime environment, the virtual machine. And then all these words that follow is the definition <coughs> from James Gosling. So Java is simple. I'm just following the slides for this. He says Java is like C++. It supports all these features. Plus, it is simpler because if you work with C++, right, you can take a floating, a floating point number and assign it to an integer data type. So, in C++, I can say the following. I can declare an integer and assign it a floating point value. When I create something as an integer, I can only save whole numbers in it. Why give it a fraction? Because it won't be saved. So x, when I go back and print it, it'll, it'll be 33, not 33.5. C++ allows us to do this. So this is one feature that he says, well, you know, if something just doesn't make sense to do, why do it? Let's give tighter types, which means that if I try to assign an integer or float value, I'll just give you a syntax error. I just won't allow it. That's what tighter type means. Automatic storage management. This is automating memory management. In C++, you can go in and allocate memory on need basis. And you write statements in your program to do that. You allocate memory, you deallocate memory. Java, you don't do that. Java takes care of it automatically. <coughs> Simpler. It's object oriented. We have talked about the definition of object oriented before, but there are here are a couple of nice bullet points. Dynamic method resolution. So, unlike other programming languages, in Java, when a method is to be called, it will go and find it dynamically. Unlike other programming languages, the location where the method is, is, is uh, situated is pre-declared. When the program starts, the location of the method is predefined. But in case of Java, it's found dynamically. <coughs> Better design component model. C++ is also object oriented, so is Java. But Java has better ways of building objects fast. 
there are so I mean the library is so vast. I was giving you the Home Depot example, right? Though that kind of functionality, we call those APIs, a programming interface. We've got all these objects that, that exist. There's over 200,000 objects that exist in the, li in the Java library. You just go and use those. Secure. So, Why is security important with Java? So, you have the Java language. And you have the Java runtime environment. Here you take a Java file and you convert that to a dot class file. The runtime takes this dot class file and executes it. You do all this in, in an IDE, the you know Eclipse which we are going to be downloading next week. To use. Kind of boring, right? You haven't done any programming in a programming class in the first week. So, sorry. Just how it is. Now, in between here and here, is it possible that someone can modify the class file? They can inject some malicious code, right? And then when the runtime environment picks it up to execute, it executes the issue, like whatever malicious bug is added, and it can have negative consequences. <coughs> so there are things in place in the platform that if this dot class file is modified, Java runtime environment will say I'm not going to execute it. Try it, right? Make a note to self to modify the dot class file. It's a binary file, so it'll be a sequence of zeros and ones, and you can go in into I don't know a Notepad or something, and when you look at it, it look like all garbage. Modify it and try to run it and see what happens, right? Your computer will catch fire. I'm kidding. So that's why we need security, right? So the changes in the class file cannot be made. And that's what we are talking about in this slide. <coughs> class signing. It makes it difficult to forge the data structures of the language. This is also considered to be a robust language. <coughs> there is strong typing. Example of strong typing is I cannot assign a float value to an integer like, like I can in C++. We don't have, in C++ when you write up a, a subprogram, you have to first declare the subprogram and then you have to write the details of the subprogram. Java, we don't do that. We just write the subprogram. There is also dynamic checking for classes and methods. What that means is that if I'm going to go and execute a, a, a method that is in my program, dynamically the runtime environment will go and check whether that exists or not. And if it doesn't, it will go and try to find it in the uh, directories where the where the Java code is. So, so it dynamic checking means while the program is running, it will check for classes and methods. Okay. Architecture neutral. You write a Java program on the Mac, 
you can run it on Windows or Unix. Architecture neutral. As long as there is a Java virtual machine to run it. Sorry, should, we should go back to this picture. You write a program that binary is called the dot class file. The dot class file is non native. You understand that the, the meaning of that term? Non native? Everyone? Non native, it's not for one operating system or hardware architecture. It can be used anywhere. <coughs> Java program is executed using a Java virtual machine. That is native. So you have a JRE or JVM, we use those two terms interchangeably, you know what they stand for, right? JRE stands for Java Runtime Environment. JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. Same thing. This thing is native, meaning you'll have one for Mac OS. There will be another one, native one for Unix. Another one for Windows. Also native. And this part of the Java platform is compiled. The language part is compiled. The inter the runtime part is interpreted. Why? Because when we take a dot class file, right? So let's say if this is my dot class file which has a series of instructions, I'm going to take the first instruction and put it through the Java virtual machine and execute it. Then I'll go to the next line and I'll execute it. Go to the third line, then execute it. So that is interpreted one line at a time. The Because these lines or instructions are non-native, you have to make them native. So the underlying operating system and hardware can execute, right? That's what this guy is doing. The Java runtime environment on these different operating systems takes the dot class file and makes it native on the fly, one line at a time. That's why the runtime is interpreted and that's why the runtime is needed as well. Get it? Good opportunity for exam question. <clears throat> what happens in the Java runtime environment? It takes a line of, it takes an instruction, converts it, makes it native, executes it before it goes to the next one. And it does that one line at a time. All right? Questions on this? Java is also portable. In C++ or C, older versions, an integer would be either two bytes or four bytes, depending on the hardware architecture. Java, it's always four bytes. There is a character data type which supports all natural languages. So if I wanted to, if I want 
जावा टू अंडरस्टैंड हिंदी और जर्मन और मैंडरिन इट इट अंडरस्टैंड ऑल कैरेक्टर सेट्स इट्स पोर्टेबल इट्स ऑल्सो पोर्टेबल बिकॉज it can run on one same program can run on windows unix and i mean same program can run on all different operating systems and underlying hardware architectures java is interpreted high performance is a question mark but this is you have to keep in mind that this is james costling's intention in 1991 when he created the started created the creating the language he wrote a uh, a paper and he, he was he was talking about this so interpreted i think is clear i just talked about it a moment ago that the runtime environment will take each instruction in the class file and execute right high performance development process is faster you write a program in c++ will take longer than it would with java depending on the complexity if you take something that's very complex the home depot approach where you just go out and pick objects from the shelf and put your software together can be done more rapidly with java than it can be with c++ because the java api is very rich bytecodes are designed with on the fly compilation in mind i mentioned earlier that we take the dot class file and that is interpreted on the fly that has some advantages as well so high performance in run time it's it has gotten better but it's not the same as c++ or c see when you run native programs those definitely run faster than when you write something that's uh platform neutral many operating system neutral and then you have to convert the code on the fly to native operating system to execute that just takes time so so what are some things that you have to factor in for the performance when you have to think about the java stack we have got few things here here is your hardware so you have a hard drive with dot class file on it you've got your operating system and you've got your java runtime environment why are java programs slow why does it cost more time you pick up the dot class file operating system helps in that and then it gives it to the runtime environment the runtime environment converts portable code to native and then it sends it back for execution see that round trip takes time right it's like almost that somebody is speaking in a in another language and the amount of time it takes to like this morning i think uh, the leaders from germany and uk were addressing the issue in france that recently that occurred actually last night news in the morning today i was this now the german leader she was talking in german and so she started speaking 
and then there was an interpreter that was saying the same thing that she was saying in English. So it took a little while. <coughs> Interpretation, right? So there is speed of execution. There is also, because you're dealing with working with Java, you have a lot of API. It's a jungle out there. When we talk about API, it's a programming interface is what it stands for, but predefined classes or predefined methods for you to just borrow and use in your program. The library is humongous. That also has a consequence because when you have to search through 10 things versus a million, it's gonna take more time. That's why it is. The runtime system, this thing is a very complicated machine. It has about 20 moving parts inside. <clears throat> and if you guys get interested in learning about what the what is the anatomy of the runtime environment, we can go and look at that too, down the road. So that makes things a little bit slower. And then of course, operating system and and hardware, you have to do interpretation right here. So it takes time. It's multi-threaded. Meaning, in any simple Java program, you can carry out two tasks at the same time, at a minimum. You might be breathing and talking at the same time. So you're a perfect Java object because you're capable of doing more than one thing at a time. Right? That is multi-threading. Like within one program, within one process, you can do more than one thing. Thread creation or you know doing multiple tasks is done through an existing library. Java is also distributed. Like it can, one program can pull things from the network. So let's say you could write a Java program for maybe a Facebook application. So you go off, your Facebook application starts, and let's say you want to do book exchange, because you take a course, you buy a $130 book, and you want to give it to one of your other friends. And usually friends are on Facebook, so you write an application and you say, hey, when the application starts, it'll go out and find all my friends on Facebook that are taking classes at De Anza College, and perhaps if there is a way to find out which classes they're taking at De Anza College, then you can just find your friends quickly and then send them a message saying, hey, I have this $130 book, I'll give it to you for $160. Would you like to buy it? And then you say, you have a buy now button. Right? And you could carry out this program and you could do things concurrently on a network. That's possible with Java. That's what the distributed mean, the definition of distributed is. Right? You can go on Facebook and you can even maybe pull things from Twitter or uh, what are some other popular social networks? I'm too old now. Instagram. Whatever. So. It's also dynamic. Have you ever thought about changing the tire in your car while you're going at 100 miles an hour? You never dream of that, would you? It's impossible. In Java, you can do that. You could be running your program, people are checking Gmail, there's a bug, right? The programmer finds the bug, puts it on the server. While the programs are running, next time, 
run time environment says aha i have a new code let me pick that up and execute metaphor changing the tire while you are running the car in java you can do that you can't do that with c++ and that's what these are technical terms dynamic loading with programmable class methods very late binding of methods these terms will become clear by the end of the quarter because we would have right started writing code so i'm not focusing on the technical mumbo jumbo as much as the meaning of it so i just want you guys to know this and it's recorded so you can watch it later too i would encourage you to watch these things later right so so in conclusion java is platform independent object oriented small applications that interact with each other and then there is the james gosling testimony on my website what's the best way to find things is to just search the website it'll be faster you can also go hunting but you know that'll take time that'll take time so <coughs> okay Gosling's testimony is is a document that is that I've uploaded or it's a, I've uploaded a link. I think you guys should really like save a copy of it before it disappears from the internet. I I don't think it will, but you should just have a copy. 